Welcome to Don't Wait Till Pigs Fly with host Nancy Becker on Global Voice Radio. Nancy and her guests will share tips and recommendations on moving forward in your life and business now and not waiting till pigs fly. Here's your host, Nancy Becker. Welcome everybody to Don't Wait Till Pigs Fly, which is a conversation with and for business owners who are seriously looking for strategies to increase revenues, add more clients, and fulfill their dreams of success. One of the things that we all deal with on a regular basis, whether we think about it or not, is security in our companies. And a lot of that security revolves around material security and digital security. What do we do with our passwords? What do we do with emails? We've just had all the information coming across with the new opt-in materials and the, and the personal security that um, is so important now when you're connecting with and getting other people's emails. And so today, we are going to be talking with a security specialist in the world of business. His name is Edward Becker, and he's a retired United States Marine Corps Master Sergeant with 23 years of service. He's currently employed by a major retailer as an asset protection team member, team leader, excuse me. He holds certifications as an organized retail crime investigator and a social media intelligence analyst. Additionally, he's the owner of the Center for Protection, Security, and Personal Safety, which provides training in executive protection, bail, fugitive recovery, and personal safety. Prior to moving to Michigan, he was chief instructor for the Uniform Protection Branch, Diplomatic Security Service, U.S. Department of State, and had been a uniformed officer assigned to the Secretary of State, Madeline Albright's residence. Wow. Welcome. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> that sure is a long list of uh, credentials you have there. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time out to join us today. My pleasure. I know that it is really important for businesses to understand a lot about security. There are, you know, issues in security with material things, you know, the, the stuff in your offices and in your filing cabinets. But some of the more important things these days is actually the security of the things that are on your computer. Let's talk a little bit about that and Tell us what we should know and how we should protect ourselves in those ways. One of the things to look at right now is remember recently, recent history where some of the big major corporations were hacked. Someone got into their systems and was able to download and access their client accounts, names, addresses, credit card information, and this can happen not only to a major company, but what about a smaller one person owned business? Can it happen to you? It can. You know, passwords need to be changed on a regular basis. They need to be random. You know, you don't want them to be your child's social security number or their birthday, their name. You want to use something unique, something that only you know. And unluckily, a lot of us write our passwords down. You know, and we sometimes we have to, but we know we keep that listing secure someplace, and we have to. I was just going to ask you about that because – if our listeners haven't guessed, uh, both of our last names are the same, and uh, Ed is my husband, and we've just been going through some major security issues going on right here in our office. 
um, with brand new computers and trying to get the, the passwords to work from the old computer to the new computer to the tablet to the cell phone. And it's been a nightmare because I write them all down and then they get changed and I forget to write the new ones <laughs> down. <laughs> and so we're trying to uh, put old passwords in. So it can really be a nightmare. And what do you suggest we do, Ed? I mean, there are programs online that are password keepers. Uh, have you ever used any of those or know anything about those? I have not used them personally, but I've looked into them. And some of them are quite reliable. You know, you just got to remember is that's another password to remember to get into those other passwords. Yeah, they, um, the one that I use is just a list. It's very, very similar to my little book that I carry around everywhere with me. But the nice thing about that is that it's all online and I'm not going to lose the book if I put it in my backpack and take it with me everywhere I go. What do you think about something like that? Does something like that make sense? Writing them down and keeping them in a book? No. Um, this program that I have online. The programs uh, online are good as long as you, one, remember that password and that program does not get hacked. People out there have the abilities of just randomly selecting a username on some account, you know, and then there's a programs out there that will just go through until they find a password that opens it up. Yeah. They go through algorithms and everything else and they're able to finally get that password. So, in all reality, then, there's nothing really that's 100% safe. No, nothing is 100% safe. So what are your best suggestions for maintaining passwords? To maintain your password, as I said, you know, they have to be random. If you write them down, make sure you put them someplace secure where no one can get to them. Change them on a yearly or semi-annual basis. Don't use the same password for everything. Change it around. Yeah, th that's, a, that's a good idea. Um, because I know from, from experience that um, my bank account was just hacked recently and it was, they, and it wasn't, I don't even know how they got it, but they got email address, they got password, they got everything. And luckily the bank caught it. But then we had to go through the whole thing and change it all over again. And it was a nightmare. So those are, those are problems. Uh, what do you think about keeping materials in the cloud? The cloud, it depends on what you're putting in the cloud. You know, you don't want to put information out there in the cloud that may compromise your business or the integrity of your business. Remember the cloud, the cloud's just out there. It's, you know, if it could, if a bank account can be hacked, can the cloud be hacked? What kinds of things would you not put in the cloud then? Banking information, prior to, you know, information that deals with your business, maybe client names, client social security numbers, client credit card information, or banking information, Pers stuff of a personal nature, I wouldn't put out there. Too much of a risk. Okay. Um... Let's talk a little bit about you. one of your titles is social media intelligence analyst. Let's talk a little bit about social media and, and what you should and shouldn't do 
you know, in personal reasons and business, what, you know, what should you and should you not do and what should you be aware of? Well, you have to remember with social media, if you're online, that impression that you have is out there. Your, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, Snapchat, they are all out there and people will look for ways to find you and to get into your, you know, we've all, we've all had it one time or another where someone has doubled up our Facebook account where all of a sudden you get a message from a friend saying, hey, did you open a new Facebook account? And you look at it and it's got your name, all your information and one picture, but not your passwords. So the information you put out on Facebook or any other social media, is pretty much out there for anyone to see. And, oh, I got rid of that. Did I? No. It never really goes away. It's out there in the world, the cyber world somewhere. You know, it's out there somewhere for someone to find. Going into that a little deeper, I know that you've done some research on um, the dark web. Does a business owner, a small business owner in particular, do they have anything to worry about with the dark web? Well, the dark web was actually created by our government, believe it or not. And it's out there. If you know how to get to it, you can. anyone can get in there. A lot of what's on the dark web is stuff that we don't want to dwell into. You know, it's a program we don't want to get involved in. But it's also where hackers will sell your personal information. That's why some of these companies out there that protect personal information are now looking into and looking into the web, the dark web, to see if you have a presence in the dark web. Because there are bad people out there who will sell your personal information, your date of birth, a copy of your birth certificate, a copy of your driver's license information, social security number, bank accounts, they will sell all this information on the dark web. You can buy anything on the dark web from narcotics to a hitman. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's really, and we're sitting here laughing about it, but you know, it's it's amazing what can happen to a business, you know, that's not aware of these kinds of things. And for so many people, we go along every day just blah, 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 blah you know, and, and um, going from day to day to day without having any sort of contingency plans or what do I do if something happens? And there have been many, many times that I've talked to people that thought they've had things backed up. They, you know, they, they had all this space on the cloud and then something's happened and they've lost everything. It's really a, a serious situation. And, you know, what do you do to get people to realize that they need to take this stuff seriously. A lot of times, people will not take it seriously until it happens to them. Until someone gets into their Facebook account or their child's Facebook account. You know, 
or they, or like happened to you, your checking account. We never thought that would happen. You know, we have we have, we have accounts with a national major banking facility, major credit union. We never thought that was going to happen. You know, who thought Home Depot would be hacked? Yeah. You no, know, but they were. And for most of my listeners, we're the little guys. We're, you know, home-based businesses, people who are, you know, not making millions of dollars a year. We're just starting out. We're just beginning our journey. We don't think that anybody's going to want to get our information. No. They? We, we think they won't. But... They may just have, they may just take that information and hold on to it until you are the big boy or big girl. And then they come back and look at you again. The day you show up on CNN or Fox News because you just hit a major contract with a big, with a big company for something. And they remember that they had your name back in their file someplace. Or they go search through their stuff and they find you again. But they've already have information on you. I saw a post on one of my Facebook groups the other day. And I kind of laughed at it and went, oh, jeez. But it's a, it's a good question to ask because this was a – Someone was asking this question legitimately and wanted to know the answer. And the question was, they had just gotten a big contract for a lot of money. And you know how in the past people would take the first dollar or the first five dollars they made with their business and they would frame it and they would put it up on the wall for everyone to see. Well, his question was the the same significance as that old $5 bill framed on the wall. But he wanted to know if it was okay for him to take a picture of that contract and the check that he had gotten for signing that contract and posting it on his business page. Well, by putting that check up there, you just gave somebody that company's routing number, their account number, their name. So now they have three things to try to work with to try to get into their, that bank account. Now they also have your name, quite possibly your bank account information if you endorsed it. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? No, it just, it's, it's bad business sense. And the fact that with today's abilities, you know, and computers and ability to zoom in and zoom out on photos, it's the graphics capacity, capabilities now on computers, it's just so significant. It's a bad move. Can you, um, and I don't know whether you can talk to this or not, but I know that you use Facebook quite often to find bad guys that have stolen from your company. Can you talk to how that happens and that, you know, you don't really want to put a lot of stuff up on Facebook? Well, a lot of people put we all, we all do. You know, Facebook is probably one of the biggest social media platforms out there. And when you look at it and you look at the number of accounts that are out there on Facebook, there are people who have two or three separate and different distinct accounts. You know, I use it when I'm looking for some of the people who stole it from us or trying to identify somebody who has come into our store and stolen and trying to identify them. 
sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. You know, I'll, I'll just take someone's name and plug someone's name in the search engine and see what I find. You know, then I'll go look at their friends and see who their friends are. Another thing that, that I know that's happened um, from, a, from a real standpoint is, and, and this is something we can talk to about offline security as well, but, and this is, this is for personals as well as business, you're getting ready to go on a vacation. We just came back from a week of being away on vacation. And our office is our home, and we have computer equipment, we have all sorts of things. There's no way that I was going to say to anyone, hey, I'm going away for X number of days, my house is empty, you know, come and get it, guys. You know, but that happens a lot, doesn't it? It happens a lot, especially not with mom or dad. But the kids posting something on there. Hey, we're headed to Disney. We'll be in Disney from so-and-so date to so-and-so date. Or I'm headed to Hawaii. You know, and everyone knows who their mom or dad is. Yeah. Tell us the story about the, uh, the bodyguards and the airplane and the kids. <laughs> there was a gentleman I know who was providing executive security to a gentleman and his family on a trip. They were on a chartered aircraft. When he got a phone call, when he got a well, message saying that their itinerary had been posted on the internet. The daughter had let everyone know where she was going and where they were going to be and when and for how long, and that no one was home. Well, the bodyguard didn't like that too much and well, he took all the cell phones and all the electronic devices away from the kids until they got back home. <laughs> he wanted to throw them out the plane door, but the pilot wouldn't come down low enough for him to open the door. I mean, but you know, this is really not brain surgery, but it's important information. It is something that people need to be aware of what are some of the other things that that people in both personal and, and, and business situations because let's face it if you're in business you're still a person and you have a personal life so what are the things that we need to prepare for and be aware of in security in general i i know we had um we had computer cameras set up in one of our old offices, and do you remember why? Mm-hmm. Because we were getting visitors, unwanted visitors, to be exact. Tell us about it. Well, it was just easier for them to get their mail, to walk through our office, to get their mail from the other side instead of walking around. Well, I hadn't even thought about that one. I'm, I'm talking about, we used to have an office in um, the upper story of a factory. And it had been years ago, it had been the offices for that factory, but the factory had closed down and was being used for other things now. And we had these beautiful offices up there that we were using. And we would walk into the office and there were still truckers that would be coming and going and loading and unloading things from the docks right downstairs from our front door. And we'd walk into the reception area of our office and there'd be a trucker sleeping. <laughs> you remember that? Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, having a camera at home is great. You know, being able to watch what happens in your home when you're not there. You know, nanny cams are still very popular, you know, especially when you can access it on your smartphone. As long as you have a secure Wi-Fi, you're good to go. It's not a bad idea. That's another 
thing that we should talk about is secure Wi-Fi. You know, a lot of small business people, the, the one persons, the consultants like me, the people who travel around, go hang out at coffee shops and co-work centers and, and different things like that. And they plug in their computers and they start to work. What should they think about and be aware of if they do that? You should be aware, you know, that when you plug into these Wi-Fi's at McDonald's, someone can be trying to hack into your computer to gain information off your computer while you're on there. The capabilities are out there and people do it. You know, when we, when, if you remember, we had a one office and I was setting up a, a wireless computer for one of our interns to use. And when I brought it up, I brought up all the Wi-Fi's that were out there. I found one for the business right next door. And it was unsecure. And I was able to get into her checking account. And I closed it all down and I went next door and I had a discussion with her and she had no idea that that was capable of. If she fixed it, I have no idea. Because we never checked it again. <laughs> we didn't want to get uh, accused of anything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I tell you. Um, but that also makes me think, once you've got a Wi-Fi, <clears throat> secure obviously means that your Wi-Fi is password protected. Yes. Do you give that password out to anybody and everybody? If you have someone, a family member that's coming to your home and staying there for a while, yeah, you can. But I may change it when they leave or when the association with that person is no longer valid. I may change the passwords. Do you just change it, you know, every Same thing. years? Same thing, yearly, every six months. Yeah, we're due to change our password here soon. I know it. And oftentimes, and I know that's another issue we've had, is that we, when we set up the Wi-Fi originally, we just used the password that came with the router, you know? Um, you need to create your own passwords. And again, it needs to be like you do with, with your various software and app programs. It needs to be something unique. It needs to be something that letters and numbers and, and special characters, right? Yes. You know, don't just, like I said earlier, don't use your son or daughter's name and date of birth, your, your wedding anniversary. Use something unique. You know, scramble it up. Use both letters, numbers, and characters. Use a variation of it. And don't make, when you change it, make it something totally different. Oh yeah, don't use something similar. They gotta be different. One of the other things that I know you've talked about is, um, and this more pertains to uh, personal safety and security, but it, it can pertain to businesses as well. Um, you were doing a, a women's safety program and there were some high school and college age girls there that wouldn't believe you about being able to find their addresses and, and pictures of their homes. And all oh, I Talk about was able to pull up their Facebook account. I was able to go into Google Maps and get a picture of their house their car. I was able to show them their friends list. They just didn't think that we could find it. You know, Google Maps is great. Street View is great. But what information does that provide to the bad guy? They get to look at your house and see what you've got. That's like people who drive around 
with the little stick figures in the back of the car. There's Mama, there's Papa, there's the three little kids, and there's the pussycat. There's no big dog. So what house do you think I'm going to? I'm gonna throw some friskies out there and let the kitty cat go. Now, if they had a big dog there, would I go? Maybe with a beef steak. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Is there, uh, yeah, there's so much. We could talk for hours and hours on, on security issues in both business and personal, but what other what other things can you tell us that we need to be aware of? Oh, I know. Um, tell us the story about the gorilla. Oh, Mr. Gorilla and awareness? Yep. There's a video out there on the internet, and it's basically an awareness video. And each group of boys, guys, and girls are in a big circle, and they are passing around two different color basketballs. And the thing says to count the number of times the white team passes the basketball to each other. Well, as they're passing this basketball around, someone dressed in a gorilla suit walks right through the center, stops, and keeps on going. 75 to 85% of the people that view that video will not see the gorilla. Because what are they paying attention to? The ball. <laughs> Passing the ball. They're concentrating on that. You know, we've all seen the videos on on uh, on a computer, like on, you know, the different programs out there where people are walking, texting on their cell phones and walk into the waiting pool and fall in or walk up to it and smack their heads against a traffic sign or walk into the middle of the road and get hit by a car because they're not paying attention to their surroundings and awareness. And we have to be paying it, especially nowadays, we have to be aware and be looking for that purple polka dotted pink elephant that someone I know could never find and never saw. Hey, I saw him the other day. <laughs> Unless he sat on her lap or walked right past her. What Ed's referring to at that point is I used to be the most unobservant person in the world. And another security story, I had an employee. And I had in my office, I had a bookshelf that had a stereo on it and all sorts of CDs. And there were some stuffed animals and just all kinds of things on this bookcase. And I walked into my office one day and I went to turn my stereo on. And there were two totally empty bookshelves in front of me that I hadn't seen all morning long. And They'd been empty. And uh, come to find out, one of my trusted employees that I thought, you know, I could give anything to to do and, and not ever think about, had walked off with all of my equipment. So awareness was not my main function. No. Uh, no. And Ed used to say, oh, did you see that? Did you see that? And so we've gotten to the point where we have trained each other to be very observant. And now it's me saying to him, did you see that? And him going, no, where? <laughs> so. But I'm not watching for the teddy bear or the deer <laughs> out in the middle of the field. But that does go to show you that being aware of things is also very important. And back to Facebook and back to uh, awareness with that, I have been getting an awful lot of requests 
to, you know, to friend me lately on Facebook. And I used to go, oh, sure, that's another person, friend, friend, friend. But now I've started looking at the information that was provided on this other person's page. And Ed mentioned it earlier. You got to be careful. There's a lot of people out there that, you know, they'll have really strange names or they'll say they're from some foreign country and they live in North Carolina or they're from North Carolina and they live in some foreign country. And if things don't feel right, they probably aren't. And I may be doing myself a misservice, but nine times out of 10 now, I will not friend somebody if it just feels funny. So, you know, again, that's something that you really need to be aware of and careful of in order to have a safe and protected life, both personally and in your business. Ed, is there anything else that you can think of that you would like to share with us? You know, a lot of us, awareness is the key, but we need to teach our children to be aware as well. A lot of times our children are not paying attention to what, who they are friending on Facebook. So our teenagers, we need, as parents, we need to look at that stuff, who they're friending as well. And be careful of what, what information they are putting out there on the internet. You know, the cyber world is huge. And what you put out there never, ever goes away. It's always out there somewhere. It'll haunt you for forever. <laughs> forever and ever. <laughs> Anything else? If anybody has any questions for Ed on this topic or any other security topic, Ed, where can they reach you at? They can reach me at my email, edward.g dot becker b-e-c-h-e-r at gmail.com great anything else you'd like to share with us before we uh get off the call um can't think of anything unless you can no i think we've pretty much said everything uh again everybody keep in mind please be safe these have certainly been great words of wisdom. Thanks so much. And I appreciate the time you've taken to be with us here today. Um, it's really important to, to have these things down in order to stay safe and keep your, your property and everything about you safe. So Ed's given you his email out address and um reach out to her if you have any questions her oh she's her i'm sorry <laughs> reach it's all been a long day reach out to him um and you know you can always get a hold of me at www.dontwaittillpigsfly.com and www.facebook.com forward slash BSU Flying Pigs. Again, thank you everybody for listening. Tune in every Thursday evening at 5 p.m. Eastern for another episode of Don't Wait Till Pigs Fly on Global Voice Radio. We now are heard both on Spreaker and on iHeartRadio. And next week we'll be chatting about some other great to know business concepts until then everybody keep on working be productive successful and soar higher see y'all soon bye-bye thank you for listening to don't wait till pigs fly with host nancy becker join nancy every thursday at 5 p.m eastern on global voice radio 